Okay. Is the Trinity meant to kill your faith in the mystery of the Godhead? Answer, yes. Let's turn to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Uh, if you have your Bible, you can turn to them. Uh, I'm, for the sake of time, like I said, I want to keep these videos short. I, I, I'm just very slow at turning. When we do a word study, I'll be turning. But um, Hebrews 11.1, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I had to throw that in there because that's what faith is. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay. You can't see the Godhead. Okay. Next, turn to Romans 10, 17. In other words, you can't see the Godhead, but people are wanting to see how the Godhead works. Okay. That's why you have drawings, people are doing drawings and everything. So they can see God the Father, and they can see God, their God the Son, and see their God the Holy Spirit. Okay? Evidence of things not seen. Okay? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we're to have faith in this. The word of God, I'm a Bible believer, so it's the King James Bible. It's God's perfect written word in English. And it's supposed to be our final authority. And we're going to get to that in a second. Like, this is a lot of professing, a lot of you out there saying, hey, I believe in the Godhead of the Bible. I'm a King James Bible believer. And yet, you're using terms that aren't found in the Bible that subtract from the Word and make this book out to be a lie. Okay. The Trinity makes this Bible, the King James Bible, out to be a lie. Okay. So Hebrews 11.6, here's the big one that hits at home. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay. Without faith it is impossible to please him, and you're supposed to diligently seek him. Okay. Uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you're diligently, and we're talking about the Godhead here, if you're diligently seeking the Godhead, you're going to look here. You're not going to go to the Catholic Church. You're not going to go to the words of men. You're not going to go to tradition. Okay? You're not going to be a man pleaser. You're going to go here to seek truth. This is where your faith is supposed to be. All right? Now, I put, yeah, are, is the Trinity people truly diligently seeking Him? No, because when they can't find what they want in here, they put it down and go over here. Well, my feelings and my opinions are, you as a Bible-believing Christian are supposed to have, this is your final authority. Not your opinions, not your feelings, not saying what's popular, not turning your back on the Bible because it's not what you want to believe. If you are a true Bible-believing, God-fearing, Christian man or woman, this is your final authority. Okay. Okay. I kind of jumped the gun and went down a lot of my... So, let's see. It says here, oh yeah, um, without faith it's impossible to please Him. And why were we created? Well, if you turn to Revelations 4, chapter 4, verse 11, you'll find out why um, we were created. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. So, one of the ways that you please God is faith. Having faith. Okay? Not the knowledge, not the head knowledge, but having faith in your heart, okay? Yeah, we're talking about false terms. And yeah, why are you going to the Catholic Church to get your doctrine? Why are professing Bible-believing Christians going to the Catholic Church in Catholic Latin terms to get their trinity and not going to the King James Bible. 
Okay. Why are they doing that? If they're truly diligently seeking Him, if they have faith, okay, faith in the King James Bible. Now, to get to the title of this video, I came across 1 Timothy 3, chapter 3, verse 8. And when I came across this, I'm like, it just, it's like something smacking me upside the forehead, and I'm going, what? This is it. Why aren't we having this? Okay. 1 Timothy 3, chapter 3, verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filth or lucre. lucre. Verse 9. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Yes. The mystery of the faith. If you explain away the Godhead, are you being faithful to the mystery? Holding the mystery of faith. Are you being faithful to the mystery of Godhead if you're trying to explain how it works? I've come across uh, who I believe to be saved, uh, brothers in Christ, where they'll try to grab, well, you know, the Godhead is like this, and they'll try to grab Adam and Eve, how they're one flesh, and marriage are one flesh, and Jesus and, and the body of Christ, we all one f And it's like they're still trying to explain how the Godhead works. They are not being faithful to the mystery. Okay. And you want to ask, what is, well, how do you know the mystery is talking about the Godhead, okay? If you jump down to verse 16 in that same chapter, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. What did we read up there? The mystery of the faith, the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay. You are commanded as a deacon, an elder, uh, anybody that's a teacher, pastor, um, pastor kind of falls into be uh, like, but there's a lot of times online you got people like me doing videos, but we're teaching, we're preaching the word, we're preaching the gospel. You're to have faith. You're supposed to hold the mystery, the mystery of godliness, with faith. And you're supposed to have a pure conscience. If you watched my video about did, uh, does the scriptures foresee the teaching of the Trinity? Um, when you believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you believe in three gods, lowercase g gods. You make God the Father into a lowercase g god because you add him to all these other gods that aren't gods. Okay. You have three lowercase g gods, and when you do communion to the Trinity, I always uh, say Eucharist, and then go, oops, I mean communion, because Trinity is Catholic. You are off, you're eating food offered to false gods. And we read it here in 1 Corinthians 8, 7, Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. I'm going to stop there. Oh, pardon me, sorry. A lot of people like me didn't have the knowledge that, hey, you know what? Let me look up the definition of person. Let me actually do the study instead of just going off what other people say. And you get the knowledge that, hey, the terms of the Trinity aren't in the Bible. The preaching of three gods is false. Teaching of th uh, God and three persons is false. God, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is false. Trinity is not even in the Bible. Where did the Trinity come from? You didn't have this knowledge, but now that you do, you're going to be held accountable to it. For some with conscience of idol unto this hour eat it as things offered unto an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Now what did it say back in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, that you're to hold the mystery of faith in a pure conscience? And it talks about here how your conscience can become weak and defiled. Why do a lot of the people out there just flat out reject the Godhead? They reject the truth? I believe it's because their conscience is weak and defiled. They're not, they, they're not holding the mysteries of the faith 
because they don't have a pure conscience. It says, in a pure conscience. The Trinity comes along and says, you know what? Um, you can be as God's known good and evil. Knowledge. If you want knowledge, uh, I'll give you knowledge. I'll tell you how the Trinity works. I'll even tell you what the Trinity looks like. And people are eating it up. They're turning their back on the faith and the mystery of the Godhead so they can have the Trinity. So I can know it all and I can explain it all. And I've seen a lot of brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ where they'll say, it's a mystery, but it's like this, but it's a mystery, but this is how it works, but it's a mystery. You're contradicting yourself. If it's a mystery, then you say it's a mystery and you'll leave it at that. I have faith in the mystery. God says it's a mystery. We're not going to understand how the Godhead works. I'm not going to try to explain how it works. But you have brothers and sisters in Christ that will go, well, it's like this, or it's like that. And they, they, get, they fall into the trap of trying to explain how it works, and they fall into sin because they add to and subtract from the Word of God, and they start teaching a false god, heresy. Okay? Holding the mistress' faith in a pure conscience. Okay? Don't let your conscience, brothers and sisters, be defiled. Get that phrases out of your head of the Trinity, the terms, and stick with the Godhead. Make sure when you're doing communion, you're doing it to Jesus Christ on the cross, the real Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Godhead, um, Jesus who is the fullness of the Godhead bodily that died on the cross. God's blood's on there. God, my Father, it was His blood that was shed on the cross. Make sure you are doing communion to the real God, the real Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Make sure you're doing that. You do not want your conscience becoming weak and defiled. Okay? When we said that, uh, the Trinity people cannot have faith in the mystery of godliness. If you stand vehemently and hold to the Trinity, you cannot have faith in the mystery of godliness. You know how it works. You know what it looks like. It's no longer a mystery. The Trinity is all about explaining the Godhead and putting images in your head, other people's ideas of what they think the Godhead should look like. And images can really be dangerous. That's why the Bible commands us not to make images of the Godhead. Right. Now I wanted to do an example. I came across the great Bible teaching about faith. And there was a story in there, and I'm like, you know what? I want to use that as an example. It's, it's great. Um, someone who didn't have simple faith, they had to see and know. You know, the images of the Godhead and knowing how it works. Okay, if you turn to John chapter 20, verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Digimus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my fingers in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Catholic Trinity people, unless I can understand how it works, I will not believe in the Godhead. Well, here's the Trinity. I'll take it. Because now it shows me how it works. Verse 26. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Okay. I use this as an example of someone who would not have faith unless they could see, unless he could touch 
unless he could know in his heart that this is Jesus Christ. He is risen. Okay? Same thing goes for the Godhead. You can't, these Trinity people cannot have simple faith, okay? The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. There's only one God, the Father. There's only one person of the, of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. These three are one. There's times where the Bible says Jesus is the Father. I don't know how it works, but I believe it with simple faith. There's time Jesus said, I'll be in you, and then he talks about God sending the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the hidden man of the heart. We have Jesus in us, but no, we have the Holy Spirit in us. How does that work? I don't know. I have simple faith. The Bible says it's truth. I believe it. Thomas here couldn't believe that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead unless he actually seen him and touched him. He didn't have faith. Okay, that's why Jesus said, be not faithless. The Trinity comes out and it offers people knowledge of, replaces the Godhead and gives people more in-depth knowledge of how the Godhead works. Okay. It steals and takes away your simple faith. You're supposed to have, beholding to the mysteries of the faith within a pure conscience. We are supposed to be standing by this book. And what did, the, what did the Trinity do? It came around and said, you know what? We're going to put this book down. And we're going to talk about the Trinity. You know, God and three persons. It's not in here. So now we have to, you know, it's just our God. The church fathers loved it. And it's the most widely accepted term, a term among the people. I had a lost person tell me that. And... They'll try to get you away from this book. The Trinity is trying to get you away from this book. It's trying to destroy your faith in the mystery of godliness. And I got another example down here. If you were to take food offered to three statues, and we're going to name the statues Billy, Joe, and Bob. You ever heard that joke? My name's Billy, Joe, Bob. Billy, Joe, and Bob, and ask a professing slash professing Christian a save, I, I believe, like you, they would say no in a heartbeat. I'm not eating that to false gods. That's what uh, Corinthians, um, was it 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 7, or chapter 8 is talking about. You don't eat food to false gods. You'd say, nope, I'm not eating it. Now, let's say we take these three statues and we alter them a little bit. Let's make this one look like a bird. We're gonna make this one look like an old man, and we're gonna, or we're gonna make this statue look like an outline of a physical being, but in, in like hollow, like see-through, and we're gonna make this man long hair, uh, feminine Jesus, but we're just gonna change the statues. So now we still have three statues, and we're gonna call it the Trinity, and we're gonna do the Eucharist. I mean, we're gonna do communion to these three idols, these three false gods, and all these people are going, yes, I'll do it, amen, yes, I'll do it, I want to worship three gods, I mean, I want to worship God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I've talked to a lot of people out there, I've given them the um, definition of person, we've shown verses, and they look at it, and they have, their conscience hasn't become weak and defiled, and they're like, you know what, I won't ever say God in three persons again because you look at the definition of person, that goes against the Bible. That goes against the teaching of the Godhead. Uh, I'll keep going back to that one verse, uh, that for there is one God, the Father. There is one God, the Father. Really? So when I say God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, I'm making this Bible, that verse, lie. It's, a, it's an error. It's in discrepancy. And they turn from it. And you brothers and sisters have turned from the pagan trinity in the false terms. But the trinity, like I said, for this whole study, the trinity, I believe, is meant to kill your faith in the mystery of godliness. It's out there giving people what they want. They want to know how it works. They want to be able to see how it works. They want images. Okay. So don't lose faith in the mystery of the Godhead, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. Don't let your conscience become weak and defiled. 
Don't continue. One, now that you know the truth about how pagan the Trinity is, how the terms aren't found in the Bible, how they've twisted the ter some terms that are in the Bible and they're adding to the Word of God, getting you, trying to force you over to worshiping a false God and killing your faith in the mystery of godliness. Don't let them do it. Stand, stand, stand. Be courageous and don't back down. I'll see you in the next video.